with a digital practice of reaching out to uh, thousands of students uh, with the help of a, a digital studio which has been set up in the premises of chief education officer uh, because as uh, uh, with the principal of this college named the health services and educational services uh, these are the services which need to be diversified they need to be made accessible to the masses at a very very low cost uh, whatever possible okay mr so, uh, uh, we will be starting with the uh, one part of this program uh, we will be uh, sharing the screen uh, with uh, dr fair masudi uh, who is a uh, faculty in women's college sopor uh, and uh, is an expert on computer applications uh, but i will uh, request him to give a particular stress on the use of the latest uh, technologies of artificial intelligence and machine learning and come down to the very uh, specific and very basic processes of our day-to-day uh, -day work uh, like i sometimes feel that i want to submit a report to the administration where i have data in a word format i would like to convert it into an excel sheet as quickly as i can or i have a written document which i would like to convert into a powerpoint presentation in the shortest possible time or i have a specific program for which i would like to launch a website or a web page within the shortest possible time all these things uh, they are being done right now uh, with the previous regime of technologies at hand but many a times uh, the citrus level uh, goes so high that it is uh, impossible and it is very time consuming that we accomplish these processes so throughout this presentation i would uh, request all the participants and district officers uh, to lend their attention and along with the the practice uh, we will have then a hands on session uh, which will uh, demonstrate and if you have availability of a desktop with internet connectivity or a laptop with internet connectivity that would be so appreciable so i put across to uh, zubair saab zubair masoodi saab अच्छा अब इसको स्क्रीन शेयर ये अब आ रहा है आ रहा है ना जी सो दिस वोट कैन फ्रॉम द ऑडियो ट्रांसमिशन ऑडियो इज फाइन सर ऑडियो इज फाइन नो मतलब वहां से आ रहा है ऑडियो आ रहा है ठीक है मेरे यहां से बंद है ऑडियो हम बहुत ही आवाज सुन रहे हैं अब आवाज आ रही है सर नहीं वो तो यहां पे है ना Uh, before uh, zubair sub takes up uh, let me inform the participants audience. and audience uh, uh, that, that uh, this, this program, program is uh, being coordinated, coordinated with the department, the department of computer applications which is post graduate department, department of computer applications in government degree college, college baramulla so, so i am joined, joined by all the subject experts here, here. Uh, we, uh, we have professor shakil ahmed here, here. Uh, we, we have professor tanveer we have on the remote locations Uh, 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 professor Mutahir Akib and Professor Nasir Ahmed Long, uh, and I am. Uh, I will be acknowledging that uh, it has been a craft since last couple of hours, uh, and somehow, if there is some uh, delay or some interruptions, uh, that is the technology of the whole process, and uh, we are looking into things from perspective of making this technology even better and better day by day. So. Uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Zubair, please carry on. Okay, uh, thank you uh, very much, Professor Chalku Sir. Uh, a very warm welcome to all the distinguished participants and uh, guests that we have joined today in this session. 
Uh, it's an absolute honor uh, to have an audience that comprises of students, officers from various departments, as Professor Chalku Sahab has said. Uh, the Honorable District Development Commissioner Baramullah and representative from the host college. Uh, so, dear students and uh, all the distinguished participants, uh, when Professor Chalku Sahab uh, reached out to me uh, to request me to present a talk on a topic that is uh, that. Uh, I believe, I personally believe, uh, affects every single individual on this planet, what's called as artificial intelligence. And then we had a casual discussion about the kind of audience we have in a normal setting. So we have audience like students. Uh, but then sir said to me that uh, we have uh, representatives from the district headquarters. Uh, so I have to slightly structure this talk in such a way that, that it basically is able to uh, address all this diverse audience. So I'm extremely thankful at the outset to the district administration Bahamula. I think this is sir, probably the first in the UT uh, who have kick-started uh, uh, the proceedings of the digital week. So uh, compliments to the district administration. And uh, a small disclaimer here, uh, maybe for the audience, uh, you may have to bear me out because this talk has been structured in such a manner that we have an <clears throat> in initial structure. In the initial slides, I'll be talking about the core of AI, uh, what AI is basically, the genesis of AI and how, how it basically started. And what led us to today, uh, what what eventually led us to what we see in the days to come. And uh, subsequently, I will have uh, some live demonstrations of the impact that AI has been able to make. And towards the end of my talk, I'll be talking more specifically about uh, the roadmap, uh, the way forward for every single individual. Maybe we are parents here or we have officers who are dis discharging their professional duties in different settings, how we can leverage AI and also how we can train the youth, the youth uh, in the times to come and empower us, empower the youth uh, uh, with the latest of AI and equip them so that uh, we are in the race. So that's how I structured this talk. Uh, so I, I humbly request all the participants to bear me out uh, for, uh, and hope that you will be patiently listening to my talk. So uh, well, what you see on my screen is uh, a movie, uh, a Hollywood movie, a very popular Hollywood movie that goes by the name Imitation Game 20, 20, uh, 2014. So I'm just wondering, I won't be able to have a two-way interaction, but I'm just wondering how many of you have actually watched this movie? Uh, anyone here, students? Have you watched the movie? All right, great. So, uh, but if you never have a chance to basically watch this movie, I strongly recommend you to, uh, you should definitely watch this movie once at least in a lifetime. Because what this movie tells us is uh, about something uh, that happened in World War II. In the World War II, uh, if you recall, Germans were dominating. Germans were dominating and conquering different countries. And uh, uh, if you see what was the main weapon behind that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, success that Germans were seeing in the World War II, that was the encryption mechanism uh, that they had deployed in order to secure the military communication. So German troops were deployed in different regions, in different areas, and the communication that was happening between German troops was encrypted. And that encryption basically was happening through an uh, electric mechanical machine, what's called as Enigma, right? That machine used to be called as Enigma. So how it worked is that it would take a text message and encrypt that message in a form that only the other machine, the other Enigma machine that was placed in a different country could decode and decipher. No other machine on the world could decipher the text. Then there was this... Uh, a uh, very famous scientist of United States who goes by the name Alan Turing. So Alan Turing was given a task by the uh, US administration, US military, to somehow find a mechanism if we can decipher this text, if we are able to decrypt the messages that German troops were you know, sending across. So this mathematician, uh, he, he, he worked immensely on that. And uh, what, what this Enigma machine would do is basically, it would substitute each letter of a plain text message with a different letter based on the initial settings of the machine, which is the most important part of this thing. So they had this Enigma machine and it had a seed value. Based on that seed value, it will start the process. So what it would do is, let's suppose, for example, if we give A, it would generate and replace it with some other character, right? So that was how it was tuned. And the best part of this machine was that the seed value was the critic part of it. Only the other machine who was configured with the same seed settings would basically decipher this message. So, uh, 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 the best part was the Germans believed that the encryption that was provided by the Enigma was completely un unbreakable. So 
it was the best war time tool that probably they had and that was the result that germans were conquering the world in world war ii what was the biggest loophole in the system and that's something that really is interesting the biggest loophole in the system was the letter why let's suppose letter why it would never map to itself so if it if something was to be coded as a it would never be uh, ciphered as encrypted as a it was something that has to be necessarily encoded in a different letter and that is where the Alan Turing picked it up. Alan Turing was a mathematician, right? So he picked up this loophole in the system, and he ran all kinds of permutations and combinations, <coughs> and he was able to figure out that loophole in the system. Once he figured that loophole in the system, he he was basically able to reduce uh, uh, reduce the combinations that were being created, and he was basically able to uh, you know, decrypt the messages that military communications were happening between Germans. So once Alan Turing did that, Germans were started to be defeated, but they were no longer having that access to that best wartime operation of military communications. Germans were starting to be pushed back because that entire communication system was broken down by Alan Turing. So what he used is, he used this uh, loophole to decode and break the enigma, and that's the major milestone that resulted in the Germans losing the World War II. So this Alan Turing, he was a brilliant mathematician and a computer scientist who basically helped Germans, who basically helped uh, the other countries to defeat Germans in the World War II. So why I'm saying this is, why I'm saying is this because this has led to something called as AI and computational theory, computational mechanisms, computations, computations happening on a computer system. Following this war, this mathematician Alan Turing, what he did is he published a research paper. He published a research paper by the name Computing Machinery Intelligence. That was in 1950. When he basically published this paper, and in that paper, he talked about something called as can machines think? Can a computer think? You talk of a human, right? Human has the capability to be able to think, to take decisions. But here we go. We are talking of a computer system and just wondering if a computer machine can think like a human. That was the thing that basically kicked off from that world. So we discussed about what is a computer system and how can machines think? How can you basically, uh, you know, often, quite often when we discuss in different forums with different kinds of class of people and we talk about Artificial intelligence, the first question that comes to mind is, how can intelligence be artificial? Is it really possible that you can have an intelligence that's artificial in nature? But yes, that we have. So if you talk about what is an AI, it's a technology that makes computers to learn, to think and to understand a bit like what people do, what we as normal human beings are able to do, what we're able to perceive, what we're able to comprehend, and uh, consequently, we take the decisions. That's precisely what artificial intelligence is able to do. So imagine, it, uh, imagine you're teaching a computer to think and learn like a human. Uh, it's when, we com uh, when computers are smart enough to understand the information, to take the decisions, and even solve the problems, right? So what it does is, it's like uh, giving computers some superpower to be really, really, very smart. And it's changing the way, basically, we use the technology and solve the daily life problems. There's a very, a very famous quote by Stephen Hawking, and that quote goes like this. Intelligence is the ability to adapt to the change. So here's a definition of intelligence. What does intelligence mean? Intelligence means to any, to any environment, to any situation, are you able to adapt? Can you take decisions based on the changing environment? based on, a, on, on a something that's really changing. So that's the core definition of intelligence. Can your behavior, can your response be calibrated based on what's happening in a real time manner, right? So that's what, uh, what, what we talk about when we talk about intelligence. So we basically are trying to, uh, when we talk about AI, we're basically trying to build systems that can easily adapt to the change in the input given to the system. Once they're given input, the system should be able to adapt to the change. In other words, we can say a system should basically constantly learn, evolve to adapt to the new in inputs and environments, which are fundamental characteristics of any intelligent system you could talk. So there is this very famous test in computer sciences when we teach computer science AI. There's a very famous test, what's called as Turing test, right? It's called as a Turing test. So what does, I'll take just 30 seconds to explain you what is the Turing test. So imagine a scenario uh, where you have a conversation uh, with something, but you are not.
Okay, so so I was just talking about there was a small sorry for intervention uh, interruption. There was a small glitch and we had to fix it. So I was talking about the Turing test, right? What is a Turing test? A Turing test basically is that you're having a conversation. humans This talk is happening between two objects. One is a human, and the other thing is a computer system, right? The Turing test challenges us to determine whether we are we are basically interacting with a human or a computer, completely based on a conversation that we are we are having. If the machine is able to convince <coughs> us that it's a human, then it passes the test. So imagine a machine has been configured in such a manner that we are able to convince ourselves that the other person with whom I am having a conversation is not a computer machine but a human, right? So if something passes this test, it's called the Turing test. In AI, we call it the Turing test. So basically what this test does is it highlights the goal of AI to develop the systems that can understand, those systems that can reason, and those systems that can communicate just as the humans do. So now the thing is, the common question is, from where does this intelligence come? In this system, we are talking about हम बात कर रहे हैं कि कंप्यूटर्स और एबल टू रीजन आउट सेम वे दैट अ ह्यूमन डज ये आता कहां से हाउ इज इट पॉसिबल राइट हाउ कैन अ कंप्यूटर सिस्टम बी फेड और मेड इन सच अ वे दैट इट कैन रीजन आउट लाइक अ ह्यूमन बी राइट सो दिस होल मैजिक बेसिकली लाइज होल मैजिक लाइज इन समथिंग कॉल्ड एज और उस डेटा से हम क्या करते हैं वी आर एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द पैटर्न्स इन दैट एग्जिस्टिंग डेटा फॉर एग्जांपल इफ वी कैन टॉक ऑफ लेट्स से वी हैव थाउजेंड्स एंड थाउजेंड्स ऑफ फोन कॉल रिकॉर्ड्स रिकॉर्डिंग्स ऑफ अ पर्सन राइट लेट्स सपोज जुबैर इज देयर एंड ही मेक्स थाउजेंड्स एंड मिलियंस ऑफ फोन राइट सो एवर सिंस आई हैव स्टार्टेड मेकिंग यूज ऑफ अ फोन माय ऑल कॉल्स आर रिकॉर्डेड नॉट द कन्वर्सेशन दैट आई एम हैविंग बट जस्ट द टाइमिंग ऑफ द कॉल व्हाट्स द टाइमिंग एंड हाउ व्हाट्स द ड्यूरेशन व्हाट्स द काइंड ऑफ पीपल आई स्पीक टू राइट So imagine a scenario that this has been recorded. So now, ten years down the line, I'm able to identify from this entire data what is my pattern of talking. To whom does I talk? किस बंदे के साथ मैं बात करता हूँ? कितने बजे बात करता हूँ? किन किन लोगों के साथ बात करता हूँ? Right? So इस डेटा से हम जब पैटर्न आइडेंटिफाई कर सकते हैं, we can find it out कि what is the way that I normally make use of a uh, mobile phone, right? And then maybe Uh, the geo or airtel you know if they analyze my data they can probably pitch me a plan based on my way of using the phone they can tell me probably this is the plan that best suits you right so they are basically using an ai system to figure it out the pattern right so the core of a artificial intelligence is like a digital brain right so that processes the information and makes decisions just like we do. but imagine it's a puzzle solver right so they're trying to make Uh, you know, make sense of some small pieces of data. Uh, what AI do? What AI does is from that puzzle, it uncovers the pattern, right? It's able to find out the pattern that exists in data. So this magic lies in those intricate patterns and human observations, enabling us to make the future prediction. When you see that our solar system nodes and weather stations are, you see that how accurately in today's date we are able to predict. Uh, predict the uh, the the weather, right? Even on hourly basis, we are able to predict the weather. Uh, if you, if I just give a small example of how AI is making an impact, you see our country takes pride in. Uh, you no, know, we have conquered moon. Last week only we have seen that we are able to land and conquer the space mission on the south pole of the moon, right? What led us to that? You know, the significant part of that 
uh, that achievement is that we have been able to deploy the AI based algorithms. When the, when the Pragyon and Vikram were making the final descent on the moon, imagine that rocket is propelling 10x the speed of an aircraft. And imagine that billionth part of a second, you have to take a decision. Take a decision based on how to control the descent of the Vikram, right? So, rover ko jo descent ho raha tha, usko control kaise ho raha tha, right? And what were the, for example, lunar topography kya thi? Waha pe, Professor Chow ko is a physicist, he can better understand us and he can better teach us what it takes when you are basically trying to land a robot on a lunar surface. What are the potential hazards? Why, why, why our country was able to basically, and imagine we're the first country to have been able to land on a, land on a south, south, south landing on a south pole. It was AI, right? It was the best use of AI. They had deployed thousands of AI algorithms that were able to figure out the lunar to topography that were able to control the descent of the law, uh, Vikram uh, uh, and uh, Pragyan when it was happening. So that is what AI brings to us. That is what made us feel proud in the entire world. We have been the first country to land on you know, South Pole of the Moon. So great. So uh, I'm just trying to, trying to run through this. So this entire thing of artificial intelligence comes from the data and we are able to understand the patterns of the data and based on that patterns of data, we are able to create something what's called as an AI model, artificial intelligence model. And once we're able to create that model, we apply that model in the real life. And that model tells us what the predictions or what's going to happen in the future and all the things, right? So great. So having said that, now the question is how AI learns. Now data to hand, but what's happening behind the scenes? Uh, uh, you know, to make it a very simple, uh, it's important to mention that there are numerous ways a computer can extract the patterns, right, from any data set. But, uh, and those patterns, to be honest, are highly, highly complex, right? Uh, but we'll, sim uh, we'll try to discuss a very simple technique, what's called a decision tree classification, right? And I'll take not more than one minute to explain you, because it's very important to understand for you, particularly as a student, as I said in my initial opening remarks, that this talk is structured in three phases. We do have the initial phase, which is talking about the core principles of AI. In the following, we'll be talking about the... Uh, AI's impact and the, what are the various tools that Professor Chow already said, so our people can make best use of AI in the in the in the daily world. So, what is this decision tree classification? It's a tree. It's a computer. It's a technique uh, in which a computer can make a decision, just uh, like a human would do, based on the data that we show to the computer. So, consider uh, something. We have a data like this. Uh, you see, this data we have uh, a small data set, and there are three parameters here. We have age of a person, we have gender of a person, and we have the kind of a genre he likes, right? What kind of a music genre this guy likes? The very, very elementary very kind of a data set. So, right? So, our job is to figure out what kind of music a person would like based on the age and the gender, right? So, what we have done is, so as human beings, we may pick up some patterns, but to teach a computer is a bit of a challenging task. So, what we will do is that, we will show this data to a computer system and then try to figure it out what is the general trend that exists in data or in other words we'll try to uh, what's the pattern that exists in data based on which we can make the future prediction agar hum bolenge is age ka banda is gender ka ye kaun sa music pasand karega right so we should be able to accurately predict that based on this data that's intelligence right isn't it so it's all about making the uh, generalizations right so what you see on the screen is something which is called as a decision tree classifier for the sake of this presentation, sir. Basically, I fed this data to a decision tree classifier and we're able to produce this kind of an image, you see? So what we're doing is that, if you see in this image, we have this, we make different nodes. We uh, apply the, it's called a Gini index. Gini index is basically hum segregate karte hai. We see if the age is uh, less or equal 30, then this person probably likes more classical music. If it's not, then we check what's if the age is less than this and we check based on the gender and based on this, we're able to come out with the rules, the different rules, right? But here is one important thing. You as a student of computer science, right? Once you are asked to write a program or the way you understand a comprehend or perceive a program, you know that a computer program, we know all the business rules, isn't it? We know that we have a prime number ka algorithm. Likna hai. We know what, the, how, what is the prime number and how. So we write a computer program and then we give this computer program any number it the computer program is already fed with a rule this is the rule right that that 
tells us whether number is a prime or not, right? So you have already configured a program, but you just make or you're leveraging the computational power of the machine. That is the traditional algorithm. But the difference between a traditional algorithm and an AI-based algorithm is that is AI basically you feed the data, you just feed the data to the AI system, it will generate the rules for you. It will automatically generate the rules for you. That is how an AI system is developed and built. So if you talk of a typical pipeline, hum AI ka jab karte hai, aap sab log, inshallah, jab karenge start AI pe karna, so a typical pipeline ye hoti hai, hum sabse pehle data ko collect karte hai, us data ko clean karte hai, us data ko split karte hai into training and test sets, and then we create a model, and then we train the model, and then we make the prediction, and then we eventually evaluate this thing, right? Great. So this was uh, a little bit about the genesis of AI. And maybe, I know I totally understand it in this small 30 minutes, I cannot be able to teach you computer science. I, I won't be able to teach you like, uh, you know, AI. But if you people are really having to do some interest in learning artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, in a more formal setting, uh, you can certainly get in touch uh, with me at the Department of Computer Sciences at Government Degree College Women's Baramula, uh, Women's so forth where me and my students have developed some cool applications on AI and we are deploying IoT as well. So great. So having said that, now, now this is a common, common case. case. Right? What, what impact has AI brought to our lives? Um, AI se kya ho ra? Right? This is something that each one, each one manager is telling you that AI is a person who has AI impact. So <clears throat> what you see now, and I'm going to play a small video. Let's say you want to ask Google to make you a hacker appointment on Tuesday between 10 and noon. What happens is the Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. Hey, you want to ask Google to make you a hacker appointment on Tuesday between 10 and noon. What happens is the Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. Understand the nuances of conversations. 
We've been working on this technology for many years. It's called Google Duplex. It brings together all our investments over the years in natural language understanding, deep learning, text-to-speech. By the way, when we are done, the assistant can give you a confirmation notification saying your appointment has been taken care of. So let me talk about uh, something about chat GPT. Uh, for the sake of this audience, chat GPT, we have just really asked about the uh, news report on Wall Street Journal. And there was this quote they were saying, like, is chat GPT the last intervention by the humans on this in this world, right? Such has been the impact of chat GPT, right? So, what's a chat GPT? It has been developed by OpenAI. It's a language model that is designed for generating human like responses in conversation. It's built on GPT architecture that's capable of understanding mm -hmm. and producing text, trained on diverse internal resources. And it's a chatbot technology. And uh, it has really taken world by a huge surprise. So what, what does it look like? It looks like this. It's a small interface of chat GPT with a small prompt here. And in this prompt, you're able to uh, basically, uh, let's say, for example, I have to write a letter to the principal of government degree college women, so forth for a grant of post matriculation scholarship. Like you're a student and you do, you want to just seek some help from a chat GPT in order to write an application, right? So what you see is a response that gets really generated like this. So you see uh, on the screen that an application, you just give a small prompt and chat GPT is basically writing everything for you, right? You give a small input, you just have to replace your name and maybe the name of the principal extra. And this is the power of chat GPT, right? So having said that, uh, if you talk about what are the top five use of chat GPT, we can use chat GPT. Each one of us can make use of chat GPT for letter writing. Our banks, they don't know how to write a letter to a bank manager. Students at times struggle to write a letter to the principal for something, or somebody needs to go to this administration to solve the problem. They can just give a small prompt to chat GPT and it can write a letter for you. For example, if you talk about translations, you want something to be translated in, uh, in any other language. So you give chat GPT that little small text, it can translate something for you. Sometimes you want, you have written a big bar and you just want to proofread it, check it for any kind of a grammatical errors, right? So you can make use of a chat GPT. Or for example, if a teacher is there and he wants, it's normally a very tedious task, sir, that we are asked to, let's say, create question papers and generate quizzes, right? So we can give chat GPT some input, some uh, knowledge, and chat GPT can basically, can, uh, you know, create quizzes for you. Or let's say formatting, you have some text and you want to format that text, replace something, and similarly writing the code. So that's how you can basically make use of a chat GPT. Uh, that's what I talked about. For example, letter writing, you have to write a letter to Deputy Commissioner Baramula for her personal intervention in settling a land dispute issue, right? So you give chat GPT is broad, chat GPT can easily and in no time create a beautifully drafted letter for you. Similarly, if you, for example, drop a translation, Right? 
I was very surprised to see last week only, sir, that I gave a prompt to Chad GPT, write me a Kashmiri poem for Kangri, right? And Chad GPT generated this poem in a, such a beautiful and lucid way. I don't think I've ever seen, a, you know, uh, you know, being done in such a beautiful way, right? So similarly, if you talk of, for example, uh, uh, proofreading that I was talking about and then uh, generating quizzes, which I talked about, and formatting and right. all kind of like uh, yesterday I had to remove some timestamps from some text, you know. So uh, ChatGPT did it in no time. And then writing code also. You programmers, sometimes you get stuck mm -hmm. and you can easily write code in no time. So Microsoft Copilot is something that's also based on ChatGPT. Uh, so for example, they have something, uh, you know, they want to, they have some input and they want to generate a proposal, sir, right? So they have some word document, so they can feed that document to Microsoft Copilot, and Microsoft Copilot in no time can generate a comprehensive proposal based on that. Or let's say, for example, you want to write an email, right? So you give that uh, prompt to the Microsoft Copilot. Copilot can, Copilot can, you know, generate it for you. Or for example, you have some content and you want to create a presentation for that. And the best part that I checked in uh, last time in the Microsoft Copilot was. I had this Excel data, for example, you have a chief education officer, uh, Baramullah, and they have some huge data set, right? For example, let's say some some scheme that rolled out and they won't check uh, what was the what was the beneficial scheme. So they have that data in Excel. So if they open that Excel and if they trigger off the copilot, copilot in 30 seconds can analyze that data in such a comprehensive manner that you're able to figure it out the complete implementation of the you know uh, that scheme. No, it can, you need not to have the statisticians to analyze the data. You don't need to spend a lot of time on that. It can basically do it in a, you know, no time. It can analyze your entire Excel sheet and present a report before you with that. This is what, what uh, ChatGPT and that AI is bringing to us and Microsoft Copilot was launched only in June this year, right? So great. Uh, 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 for the sake of this audience, I'll take maybe sir, five minutes to just uh, quickly show a demo of ChatGPT. Okay. Uh, how basically we can use ChatGPT and for all, all the audience have joined us today, it's important that they must know how ChatGPT can be opened and what, what's the kind of thing. So I would request my uh, my students, uh, Akhid, and he's working with me on AI. Uh, Akhid, if you can just maybe show us a very quick demo of maybe five minutes, not more than that. Just two examples of, or two or three examples of using ChatGPT. So Akhid, I'm transferring it over to you. Yeah, I can hear you, yeah. Your uh, screen is not here. Yeah, screen is not here.
Uh, okay, can we have one example? Okay, can we have one example of okay, let's say for example, okay, we just want to write something. Uh, uh, tell us about Kashmir in Kashmiri language, right? Write something about Kashmir in Kashmiri language. Well, that's a great thing, Arkit. I think I basically we have like, for example, a huge paragraph of text, and we basically want to limit it and shorten it maybe to hundred words or try and summarize it. That's that's something that normally people do. I mean, uh, for a student also, sometimes they ask you to summarize the text, right? That's really great. Okay, so basically, what you are trying to do is you have given an input now, input text, and you are asking ChatGPT to create questions, MCQ-based questions, and you are explicitly specifying it that I need four kind of options. So. Uh, that's great. That's really fantastic. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's really great. Okay, I'm so thankful to you for a lovely uh, demonstration on ChatGPT, and uh, uh, that's so uh, so nicely you presented it. And uh, I'm gonna come come to something next. Uh, Alexa, I'll take maybe uh, just ten minutes more. Next ten. Can we can we have just a kind of uh, we will interrupt this uh, presentation part? Yeah. Uh, agriculture is our observed. Yeah. So would you like to take the screen right now? Mm -hmm. Take. मैं आपको ले लेता हूँ। फिर उसके बाद हम रिज्यूम करेंगे। So, ladies and gentlemen, a very effective session. You have seen that how small things can be helped out. They can be made easier than what they look like sometimes. I I have here with me. In fact, we'll be talking about uh, the presentations and the application part again. Uh, but for a while, uh, we have uh, Mr. Sayed Mahjoor. Uh, we are actually a agricultural society and agricultural practices need maximum attention. And given that uh, District Baramala is an aspirational district and is doing uh, great things on the agricultural front, so I would... Uh, uh invite on the screen uh mr said mahjoor who is representing agriculture department thank you sir Good afternoon to all participants in this training session. मैं आपको simple language में agriculture के हवाले से जो AI ने revolution लाया है अभी तक बहुत सारे states में और आने वाले दिनों में agriculture के part पे हम जाते हैं तो agriculture में technology के हवाले से किस तरह हम एक इसमें डेवलपमेंट ऐसी करेंगे कि हमें इनपुट कम लगे और हमारा प्रोडक्ट जो है वो ज्यादा हमें जो फार्मर की इनकम है वो डबल करनी है 2025 तक जैसे कि पीएम ऑफ इंडिया ने इसके लिए एक सेशन डिमॉन्स्ट्रेट किया है तो इसमें अभी जो एग्रीकल्चर में एआई का जो पार्ट है आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस का जिसके बारे में जुबैर सर ने एक प्रेजेंटेशन प्रोड्यूस की है तो हमने भी उनसे बहुत कुछ सीखा है अभी तक तो इनशाला आयंदा भी सीखेंगे लेकिन उसके बाद जो एग्रीकल्चर की बात बारी आती है इसमें तो एग्रीकल्चर में हम किस तरह उसको इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस को तो इसके लिए गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ने बहुत सारे ऐसे डिवाइसेस जो है इंपोर्ट किए हैं सेंसर्स इंपोर्ट किए हैं क्योंकि हमारा सेक्टर जो है वो सेंसर बेस्ड रहेगा जो एग्रीकल्चर का है क्योंकि हमें आउटपुट लेना है इसी सॉइल से तो एक पांच मिनट का टाइम मुझे दिया है इसमें मुझे एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर में आपको इंट्रोड्यूस करना है कि किस तरह हम इन इस टेक्नोलॉजी को इस्तेमाल करते हैं ए को बहुत सारे सेंसर्स हैं जो हम किस में लगाते हैं सॉइल में लगाते हैं जिससे हमें पता चलता है कि सॉइल की कंडीशन क्या है हमारे क्राप को क्या क्या चाहिए किस चीज की डिफिशेंसी है जैसे कि अगर हम उस सॉइल को इससे पहले एनालाइज करना चाहेंगे तो हमें उस सॉइल को लैब में ले जाना पड़ता है फिर वहां पर एक हमें रिपोर्ट बनानी पड़ती है फिर जाके वहां पर हम इसको आ, अगर कोई प्रॉब्लम होगी तो उसको रिसॉल्व कर सकते थे लेकिन आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस की वजह से हमारा जो डिवाइस है हमारा जो सेंसर है वो सॉइल के अंदर जाता है वो वहां से सिग्नल भेजता है और सिग्नल कैप्चर करता है सैटेलाइट सैटेलाइट वापस भेजता है जहां पर मशीन रखी होगी जिसको हम इंटेलिजेंस मशीन जैसे कि जुबैर सर ने अभी बताया मैं नहीं चाहता हूँ कि उसका बार बार तकरार हो आप, आपके जहन में अभी है वो तो उस तक पहुंच जाता है तो सीधे से हमारे 
रोबोट्स जो है जो ड्रोन्स की शक्ल में एक्टिवेट हो जाते हैं वो एकट जहां पर कोई मुश्किल होगी कोई प्रॉब्लम होगी सॉइल में वो वहां पर उस चीज को स्प्रे करता है तो हमारा प्लांट जो है वो हेल्दी रहता है उसमें अगर जैसे हमारे अभी एक ऐप आई है एग्रीकल्चर एक नहीं हजारों ऐप्स आई है एक का मैं थोड़ा सा आपको ये उसके बारे में इंट्रोडक्शन दे दूंगा प्लांट एक्स प्लांट एक्स एक ऐप है जो गूगल स्टोर में है तो वहां पर अगर आपके किचन गार्डन में कोई टमाटर का पौधा है या कोई और एप्पल का ट्री है कुछ भी है तो उस पर लग रहा है आपको कोई सिकेप हो रही है और टमाटर के जैसे हमारे पास आते हैं फील्ड से कि हमारे जो चिलीज थे तो वो खराब हो गए उनको राय हो गया तो इस तरह की बहुत सी ऐसी जो प्रॉब्लम्स आती है फील्ड से फार्मर को तो वो फार्मर को हम तक पहुंचने में उसका जो इन्वेस्टमेंट हो जाता है वो भी इसी क्रॉप पर चढ़ता है तो उसकी जो इकोनॉमिक्स है वो थोड़ी सी इफेक्टिव रहती है इस चीज से तो हम क्या करते हैं हम आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस क्या करती है इस ऐप में उस चीज को इंट्रोड्यूस किया गया है इसको इंप्लीमेंट किया गया है प्लांट एक्स में तो क्या होता है कि उसमें हम एक ऐप एक फोटो कैप्चर करते हैं ऐप को उस प्लांट के लीप की तरफ ले जाते हैं वहां पर एक फोटो कैप्चर करते हैं तो ऐप एनालाइज करके कौन सा ट्री है उस पत्ते उस लीफ की वजह से वो एनालाइज करती है ये कौन सा लीफ है अब हम ले जाते हैं दूसरा पिक्चर दूसरी पिक्चर हम कैप्चर करते हैं उस स्पॉट पर जहां पर आपको लग रहा है कि कोई सेप्टम ऐसा है जो डिजीज मसल आप मान लीजिए डिजीज है कोई पत्ता जो है वो खराब हो रहा है येलो कलर का हो रहा है तो उसको कैप्चर करेगा और अगर आपके फ्रूट पर कोई दाग लगा है जैसे टमाटर है उस पर कोई डॉट लगा है ब्लैक डॉट वो उसको एनालाइज करके आपको पूरी उसमें जो भी एडवाइजरी होगी वो आपको प्रोवाइड करेगा और हमारा जो एग्रीकल्चर का सेक्टर है वो पुराने जमाने में अगर हम देखेंगे पुराने जमाने में हमारा सिस्टम जो हमारा ट्रेडिशनल था एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर उसके हवाले से अगर हम मौजूदा एग्रीकल्चर की तरफ आएंगे तो वहां पर आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस या यही जो मॉडर्न टेक्नोलॉजी है तो उसने रेवोल्यूशन लाया है इसमें कुछ ट्रैक्टर्स ऐसे हैं जैसे अभी अगर हम जाते हैं अपने फील्ड में तो वहां पर हमें क्या करना पड़ता है हमें खुद से वीड्स को उखाड़ना पड़ता है लेकिन सेंसर बेड्स ट्रैक्टर्स जो है वो आपके खेतों में आपके फील्ड में खुद ब खुद चलते हैं उनके सामने जो कैमराज लगे होते हैं वो इस फील्ड को पहले एनालाइज करते हैं कि कितना बड़ा फील्ड है कहाँ कहाँ कर पौधा लगा हुआ होता है वो खुद ब खुद चलता है इसी तरह ड्रोन भी जब भी हमारे क्योंकि हमारी नजर से कुछ चीजें ओझल हो जाती हैं अगर हम कितनी भी बागवानी करेंगे कितना भी ख्याल रखेंगे अपने खेत का फिर भी हमारी आंखों से कुछ चीजें ओझल हो जाती है वो हमारे सामने नहीं आती है मसलन आयंदा जो जमाना आने वाला है उसमें हमारे बाउंड्रीज जो फील्ड की होगी वहां पर सेंसर्स लगे होंगे अगर कोई ऐसा इंसेक्ट जिसकी वजह से या पेस्ट जिसकी वजह से हमारे इस फसल को किसी तरह का भी नुकसान हो सकता है तो वहीं पर वो सेंसर उसको कैप्चर करेगा कि ये जो है हमारे खेत को नुकसान पहुंचाएगा जैसे बीज है वो भी एक इंसेक्ट है वो हमारे खेत को खेत को नुकसान नहीं पहुंचाती है बल्कि पॉलिनेशन करती है जैसे होनी बीज है या कोई कुछ और इंसेक्ट है लेकिन कुछ इंसेक्ट ऐसे हैं जो अपने ऊपर पेस्टस ला के पौधे पर छोड़ देती है तो उससे हमारा पौधा क्या जो होता है डिजीज उसमें पैदा हो जाती तो हमारे जो कैमराज लगे होंगे जो सेंसर लगे होंगे वो उसको पहचान लेंगे कि ये जी वो चीज है जो हमारे खेत को नुकसान पहुंचाती है सीधे यहां से सिग्नल जाती है थ्रू सैटेलाइट रोबोट को वापस आती है क्योंकि हम सारे मशीन के साथ कनेक्ट हैं अभी तक अभी बोल रहे थे सर हमारे ये प्रॉम्प्ट के बारे में तो आयंदा जो फ्यूचर है वो हम बात कर कम्युनिकेशन जो है वो हम एक कंप्यूटर से करनी है अभी तक हम जबान से आपके साथ बात करते थे मैंने उर्दू लैंग्वेज इस्तेमाल की सर ने इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज इस्तेमाल की मुझे लगा कि मैं ज्यादा कम्युनिकेट कर पाऊंगा उर्दू में अच्छी तरह मैं इंग्लिश में थोड़ा सा हिचकिचाऊंगा तो अब मैंने ये लैंग्वेज की है लेकिन अगर कंप्यूटर से हमें बात करनी है तो उसके लिए हमें प्रॉम्प्ट लैंग्वेज सीखनी है तो जो प्रॉम्प्ट इंजीनियर होगा वो एक अच्छा डॉक्टर होगा
जो प्रॉम्प्ट इंजीनियर होगा वही एक अच्छा साइंटिस्ट होगा तो हमें कंप्यूटर से अब बात करनी है कंप्यूटर को किस तरह हम आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस में इस प्रॉम्प्ट को लिखेंगे ताकि हमें सही से इस चीज का पता चल जाए तो जो हमारे सेंसर्स लगे हुए हैं वो एक डाटा कहाँ भेजता है सैटेलाइट को सैटेलाइट वापस भेजता है डाटा इस कहा इस रोबोट को रोबोट एक्टिवेट हो जाता है रोबोट आपने देखे हैं एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर में है रोबोट बहुत सारे जैसे ये है अभी अच्छा मेरी वाली नहीं चल रही है आ वो आ गई तो ये रोबोट है ये एक्टिवेट हो जाता है वहां उस स्पॉट पर जाके उस इंसेक्ट को वहीं पर किल कर देता है क्योंकि इसके अंदर बहुत सारी ऐसी अद्वियात मौजूद है यानी मेडिसन होते हैं केमिकल्स होते हैं क्योंकि हमें अगर इंसेक्टिसाइड स्प्रे करना है तो उसके लिए केमिकल चाहिए तो वो केमिकल अपने में जो हम उसको कहते हैं कि किस मिकदार से किस कीड़े को फेंकना है वो खुद तैयार करके उसको फेंकता है तो हमारा बाग जो है वो उस पर अगर हम बाद में स्प्रे करेंगे कितना खर्च हो जाएगा एक पौधे को अगर अगर एक इंसेक्ट को मारना पड़ेगा तो कितना कितना खर्च हो जाएगा एक ग्राम का सौवा हिस्सा खर्च हो जाएगा इसी तरह हमारे बाग में अब आगे फंजे आ गया है किसी तरह से उसने कॉलोनी बनाई अपनी किसी आ, तो सेंसर जो है वो एक्टिव रहते हैं रोबोट उसमें ऊपर से के, आ, जो है सर्वेलेंस करते हैं अपने उस बाग का होगा खेत का होगा यो जो भी है वो तो क्या करता है वो चीजें एनालाइज करता है जिस पत्ते पर ये कॉलोनी बैठी होगी फंजे की तो वो उसको वही पर तो ये इस रोबोटिक्स की वजह से इसी तरह हम दूसरे भी मतलब हम एक ऐसा मॉड्यूल बना सकते हैं आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस के थ्रू मसलन आपके पास एक खेत है एक बीघा खेत है एक हेक्टेयर है या एक एकेयर एकर है तो उसमें आपने एनालाइज किया ये सारा जो खेल है वो डाटा का है जो भी खेल है हमारा आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस का वो डाटा का है जितना हम डाटा प्रोड्यूस करेंगे मशीन को मशीन उसी तरह उसको एनालाइज करेगी जैसे कि अभी इससे पहले वाली प्रेजेंटेशन में आपने देखा कि हमने उसमें एक इंसान का डाटा भर दिया कि किस एज में क्या क्या कर सकता है तो उसने हमें एनालाइज करके दिया वापस ये बना दिया तो ये एक सिस्टम है डाटा का अब जो आने वाली एज है वो डाटा की है डाटा जितना हम प्रोड्यूस करेंगे मशीन को मशीन उसी तरह हमें एनालाइज करके हमारे साथ कम्युनिकेट कर पाएगी मशीन जैसे मैं आपको बताऊंगा ये मोबाइल है मेरा ये मोबाइल इसमें मैंने लॉग इन किया है अपना मेल आईडी ठीक है ना मेल आईडी इसको पता है मैं किस तरह की चीजें पसंद करता हूँ मेरे यूट्यूब पे मेरे फेसबुक अकाउंट पे उसी तरह की चीजें आती हैं अब मैंने एक नया मोबाइल ले लिया बिल्कुल कोरा मोबाइल है उसमें ना तो मेरा सिम डाला हुआ है ना मेरा मेल आई डाला हुआ है मैंने एक नया मेल आई डाला है उसमें कोई उसको इस्तेमाल नहीं किया उसी वक्त जनरेट किया है एक ऐसा ये कनेक्टिविटी दी है जो मैंने इससे पहले कहीं कनेक्टिविटी इस्तेमाल नहीं की अब मैं ये अपने सामने रखूंगा ये सुनता है कि नहीं सुनता है मोबाइल सुनता है कि नहीं सुनता है ये मेरा डाटा रिकॉर्ड करता है कि नहीं करता है लेकिन अभी इसको मेरा रिकॉर्ड पता मैंने इसको सामने रखा अब मैंने बातें शुरू की हाँ एग्रीकल्चर में ये है एग्रीकल्चर के साथ ये एग्रीकल्चर में हम ये ये इस्तेमाल करेंगे कल जब आप ये मोबाइल खोलेंगे ना अड़तालीस घंटे बाद अड़तालीस घंटे के बाद आपके YouTube पर भी यही चीजें होंगी जो मैं कह रहा हूँ मैंने इसको इस्तेमाल लेकिन सामने रखा ये मेरा डाटा क्या इस्तेमाल ये प्राइवेसी के ऊपर आता है तो मैं इसको इग्नोर कर सकता हूँ क्योंकि लेकिन ये करता है जैसे हम हाई को कहेंगे तो ये वापस रिप्लाई करता है ये सुनता भी है हमेशा सुनता है कोई चीज आपकी कोई भी आवाज ये आ, हर कोई चीज ये सुनता है जैसे आप एप्पल का फोन ले लेंगे तो उसमें भी एक कमांड होती है ये कमांड जब आप देते हैं तो ये एक्टिवेट हो जाता है ये मुझसे बात करता है वरना कोई भी आप कहें बात करेंगे ये कैच करता है वो चीज तो यहाँ पर जो हमारा डाटा का सिस्टम है हम अपने फील्ड का डाटा जो है फीड करेंगे अपनी मशीन पे तो मशीन हमें क्या एनालाइज करके देगी ये जी ये इस एरिया में है इस एरिया का भी डाटा देना है और यहाँ पर कौन कौन सी हमें मंडी है मसलन हमें एग्रीकल्चर के साथ मंडी के साथ जरूरी वास्ता है हमारा ट्रांसपोर्टेशन का सिस्टम क्या है यहाँ पर वो सारी चीजें इसको दे देगी ये उधर से वापस हमें वापस रिप्लाई करेगी मशीन रिप्लाई करेगी मैं नहीं क्योंकि मैं डाकरा प्लांट्स हूँ मैं नहीं करूंगा रिप्लाई 
मशीन खुद रिप्लाई करेगी मैं सिर्फ डाटा उसको प्रोवाइड करूंगा कि इतना जमीन है इसका एरिया ये है मंडी ये ये है ट्रांसपोर्टेशन जो है वो इस तरह की है मिसाल के तौर पर तो ये क्या करेगी ये मुझे उधर से ही कहेगी ये मशीन कि आप इस एरिया के लिए यहाँ पर जो मंडी है इस मंडी के लिए ट्रांसपोर्टेशन जो है उस सिस्टम के तहत आपको चाहिए आप अंगूर की यानी काली फुलर की काश्त करें क्यों काली फुलर की काश्त अगर इस टाइम करेंगे वो सारा डाटा एनालाइज कर डाटा मैंने प्रोड्यूस किया है वो मुझे कहेगा अगर आप ये इस वक्त ये बीज बोएंगे तो आपको अक्टूबर या नवंबर में इतना प्रॉफिट आएगा क्योंकि उस टाइम इस मंडी में ये चीज नहीं होती जैसे हमने उड़ी में थोड़ा सा हमने अपना दिमाग इस्तेमाल किया है आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस नहीं किया है उड़ी में हमने क्या किया है उड़ी में हमने मटर की काश्त को गर्मियों वाली मटर बनाई है जैसे अभी जो है हमारा मटर होता है किस टाइम बनता है यहाँ पर मई या जून में मई जून लेकिन हमारा अप्रैल में उड़ी में तैयार होता है तो जब हम वो यहाँ पर लाते हैं तो उसकी कास्ट होती है एक सौ लेकिन जब यहाँ पर मई या जून में मटर की काश्त निकलती है तो पांच रुपए आते हैं किसको किसान को और जब वो मार्केट में जाता है बीस रुपए तक जाता है उसमें निकालने वाले को पांच रुपए देने पड़ते हैं और ट्रांसपोर्टेशन का चढ़ता है पांच रुपए और पांच रुपए कमाता है व्यापारी तो किसान को मिल कितने मिलते हैं तीस रुपए अब अगर ये उस टाइम बोएगा जिस टाइम ये मंडी में ये चीज अवेलेबल नहीं होगी तो उस टाइम कितना नफा आएगा एक रुपए किलो होता है तो उसको कम से कम अस्सी रुपए मिलेंगे उसी पांच रुपए के बदले अगर वो टेक्नोलॉजी को इस्तेमाल करेगा लेकिन उसके लिए डाटा चाहिए उसके लिए सारा जो खेल है ना वो डाटा का है तो जैसे यहाँ पर हमने इसमें एक ऐप जो मैंने बताई सी ऐप है चैट जी से पूछ सकते हैं कि हमारे एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर में इंडिया में कितनी एप्स हैं जो आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस के एनेबल्ड है जिसमें आर्टिफिशियल आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस इंट्रोड्यूस की हुई है तो इस तरह की बहुत सारी चीजें ये सारे कुछ ऐसे हैं क्योंकि पांच ही मिनट थे शायद मुझे ज्यादा टाइम जी तो थैंक यू वेरी मच आपका कुछ भी होगा तो हम एग्रीकल्चर डिपार्टमेंट से यहाँ चीफ एग्रीकल्चर ऑफिस बारामूला में तो आप हमसे कॉन्टेक्ट कर सकते हैं वो हमारा फोन नंबर है और ये हमारा ई मेल है थैंक यू सर Uh, so thank uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Said Majoor. Uh, this was just a prototype. Other departments, I am very sure, will have similar case studies, similar techniques being used, customized to their own kind of requirement. जिस तरह की जैसी कोई requirement है, वो उस तरह से उसको customize कर सकता है. We will be uh, uh, heading to another round of uh, demonstrations now, where the use of AI as a tool. Uh, as i said in the beginning of the session for making websites for making presentation that will be taken up uh, but prior to that uh, i would like to request uh, uh, additional deputy commissioner baramula that if he can share his thoughts uh, if he is uh, tied to the screen right now dr zuhur ahmed rana sir can we have the news sir उनको मैसेज कर लें। ओके इन द मीन टाइम नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट मिस्टर मुनीर अबनवानी टू कंटिन्यू विद द डेमोस्ट्रेशन पार्ट ऑफ यूजिंग एआई एंड यू विल सी अगेन वंडरफुल टूल इन योर हैंड फॉर लॉन्चिंग क्विकली आई एम मॉडिफाइंग डेटाबेसेस देन एक्सट्रैक्टिंग सर्टेन थिंग्स फ्रॉम द डेटाबेसेस एंड टू द एक्सटेंड दैट लॉन्चिंग अ वेबसाइट विद इन अ वेरी शॉर्ट टाइम सो आई पास ऑन टू मिस्टर मुनीर अबनवानी चावल इसमें नहीं है respected uh, additional deputy commissioner baramulla principal government degree college baramulla professor chalku along with his colleagues and district officers from the other departments 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It's a matter of uh, immense pleasure for all of us that we have gathered here under one banner to share our thoughts on artificial intelligence, which is a burning topic of this century. People have been working on it. We have uh, been associated with technology since last two, three decades. Two decades, I think. And this college has also started computer science. It's been more than uh, 15 years now. And uh, I see most of the professors are alumni of the same college. So uh, we have seen a lot of changes in the development of computer sciences, how the field has grown and artificial intelligence has played a very vital role in uh, changing the professions. Now, uh, as one of our colleagues said, that prompt engineering, prompt engineering is nothing. It's, it would be a new field in uh, engineering colleges. Earlier, uh, the cream branch used to be civil uh, engineering or the electrical engineering. But now people are moving towards prompt engineering because artificial intelligence is based on the data which has been uploaded on Google since last two decades. And as uh, one of our friends, Dr. Zubair said, that it is analyzing data. Based, it's actually, we call it as a data mining. It's a subject of yours. Uh, people from the ET department will be learning data mining. So extraction of data in the right, you know, in a better way so that the future could be predicted. That is actually artificial intelligence. Voice is being recorded, or the data is being analyzed. Data is being read. And after that, what are what are the things which human brains have predicted, or the decisions which humans have made over the internet in the last decade? Based on those decisions, new decisions of the future would be predicted. So that's actually, and we will be will be making use of few tools. It's a burning topic, and it would take days for us to uh, gather this all. And every day we are getting thousands of tools. So I'll be sharing a presentation. I'll be sharing few of the tools which are of your use. So I would request students to keep pen and paper or the district officers to keep pen and paper handy or a cell phone so that they could make note of these tools. Yes, from here. We'll start from here. Yes. See, this is a chat GPT prompt. As you said, for example, you are asked or uh, your boss asks you to make a presentation, be it agriculture, be it Khadi village department, be it r and be it any hospital, if they need to make a presentation on a specific topic. So there are three important steps which every professional has to take. First, he has to gather data. First, he has to collect the data. That takes a lot of time. Pertaining to that particular topic, gathering of data, then filtering of data. Then a design of the presentation, which takes for a professional, because we have seen uh, many of the professionals share their feedbacks with us, and we see that they always say that it takes 40 to 60 hours for a presentation of 20 slides. 40 to 60 hours. So that means if every day we spend around five hours on a presentation, a professional presentation, it would take at least a week's time for us, more than a week's time. So better is that we ask you give us a topic. Let's say, for example, there is a scheme in uh, district administration that is called Samagra. Samagra scheme. Make presentation of, let's say, 20 slides on. It's on Samagra scheme pertaining to Kashmir. Here we'll have the prompt. See, it will make these 20 slides. But the question is, how will we present these 20 slides? We are aware of PowerPoint presentations, right? So we have to make every we have to keep adding the slides once we start that application. So here you don't need it. You just need to wait for one minute, one and a half minutes, so that all 20 slides are in front of you. If you feel the content is pertaining to you or you need to make a little bit of changes, that might take 10, 15 minutes more. So that you can do later on also. But most of the work has already been done. And what you need to do is you have to copy these 20 slides. So you will start copying them. Done. And there is one more tool now that is called gamma.app. This is the tool, gamma.app. So you have to go to this tool, gamma.app, and you click on uh, make presentation.
you can freely create an account. You have to log in with a Google account into this gamma.app and then you click on create new. New from blank or create new. Then you can do it. You have to paste this presentation here. You'll be in. You have pasted all of this and then you click on present. Wait for some time. See, it will give you a complete presentation. Within 30 to 40 seconds, it's going to give you a present, a complete presentation. And in the meantime, we'll see one more tool. That is Tome.app. In Tome.app, what you can do is, you, you don't need to go to ChatGPT. It is internally connected with ChatGPT. So it directly gives you a design and the content both at the same time. You don't have to go to two steps. You click on create, you type a topic, See, create a presentation about. Since we have computer science students, I'll write operating system Macintosh. And you click on enter. See, the presentation is in front of you. That's it. You click on continue, you'll get a graphical view. Here it is. So you have a complete presentation. You can share it over the internet. That can also be done. See, the presentation is in front of you. So it's a wonderful tool for making small presentations. And for bigger presentations, you need to go to gamma.app. It's still analyzing the data. And then we have one more tool. This is of major concern for all the professionals. Sometimes what we do is we make mistakes. Like we go to any of the websites. It asks you for a login. And most of the times you have a prompt login with Google account and we deliberately intentionally or unten unintentionally, we log into that account. And most of the times we are flooded, our inbox is flooded with the mails, unwanted mails. Every day we delete hundreds of mails to keep our inbox ready with those mails, which are of our use. And most of them are flooded with unwanted material. We don't want that material. So for that, there is a tool in artificial intelligence that's called unroll.me. This is a tool. That is why I asked you to make a note of these tools. Unroll.me. The moment you click on unroll.me, log in with Google account, your own email account, it will show you all those unwanted websites which are sending you mails on every day. And if there are only 50 websites where you have logged in till now for one or the other reason, but they are continuously sending you mails, you have not subscribed or subscribed at both times, they are flooding your inbox with emails. So you'll get a list of those websites in unroll.me. Then there are options to unsubscribe. There are options to roll up. You'll get a list automatically. The moment you log in with your Gmail account or uh, Microsoft account, you'll get a list of those websites which are sending you mails on every day. Then you can select them. There is an option on the screen, unroll or unsubscribe. You can click on unsubscribe. It would not send you again. Got it? So this is a tool of, uh, you know, it's a very useful tool. And one more thing for uh, police department, for professors, for uh, doctors, because they need to uh, be in touch with uh, the latest developments, what is happening around. There are countless research papers being published every day, every year. And there is a paywall in between. Once we try to access the research paper of international repute, like Springer, these are the scientific journals of you know uh, very high repute. And if you want to extract data or research papers from them, what has been done, let's say you're working uh, in BCA department, so the biggest uh, department in computer sciences or artificial intelligence is Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. So if you want to access research papers or research repository of MIT, there is a paywall in between. So there are lots of dollars which you need to pay for every paper to get an access to. See, there are $50 for this paper. So if you need PDF of this paper, you can copy a link and paste it here. You can paste it in 12feet.io without a, it would bypass the paywall and you'll have access to that research paper. It is beneficial for the journalists also. So the uh, papers of international repute are always paid, most of them. So you can bypass the paywall and you can directly access that repository. Then we have one more, let's say you are designing an advertisement and you, you have something in mind, you want a design, you want a graphical representation of something. Let's say a boss is scolding his subordinate or a boss is very tired after his work or somebody is working, a program is work, programmer is working on a laptop and he's very tired. 
so you can write that scene in english language and artificial intelligence can read it and it would extract the data in the form of image that would be in front of you let's say we write a program a tired programmer then we have see this is this is of your use programming you do c c++ programming java or python or let's say anything else your teachers teach you most of the times what happens is when we used to program things in c c++ it would the, when we compile a program it would only highlight you it would give you an idea that your error can be somewhere your error can be here or if you write a code for you know for uh, finding a factorial of a given number for that you have to either understand the algorithm properly then write it and once your coders once your programmers in the company the biggest repository for all of us used to be because we have also uh, we all have worked in the industry the major repository for us used to be github but now there is a tool we write a program in any language it would give you give you a complete program write a program in c++ to find the factorial of a number it would give you a complete program with all header files everything would be there see here it is a complete program is here and let's say if i copy this program i have a program and i copy i i remember my time uh, mr shakil would also be remembering that time we used to copy this from yashwant kanedkar and bala guru sami books and type it on a computer it would take us at least 30 40 minutes now if you have a program somewhere written but it is erroneous program there are multiple errors a program is of thousand lines of code but you don't know where the actual error is and what kind of error is it and how can i rectify this snag how can i rectify these errors there is a tool called debugcode.ai you paste your program it would give you a complete prompt that where you have made a mistake see i'll delete this Let's say I write it test dot cpp. It's a C plus plus program, and I put it here. Now, I would make few errors here. Deliberately, I would make few of the errors, and then let's see. I'll click on debug. See, find errors, and give me the correct code. and i'll click on debug see on the left hand side it would give me a correct code and it would prompt me where i had made mistakes see i did a semicolon at the end of the return so here i need to add a semicolon that's what we did so we made a mistake here and then closing parenthesis after main so that was missing so i deliberately took it off so that parenthesis has to be there so it has given me a correct code with the prompt also where i made mistakes so that i could learn from this whenever i need to write a code i can learn from this that where i am making a mistake one more thing most of the people in offices work with microsoft word and excel and in excel there are thousands of formulas which we don't remember even a student does not remember those thousands of formulas but if we need to customize the data if we need to extract certain reports from a huge chunk of data so we are thinking in mind that we have this kind of query which we need to run but we don't know the formula so there is a tool called formula.dog you write it let's say for example if i have marks between 80 and 100 then it should display me grade a if i have marks between 60 and 80 it should display me grade b so i am giving a query i am giving a decision making statement to this in english language and it would directly translate into excel formula i click on generate formula it would directly give me a formula see the formula is here so you don't need to remember the formula that could be done and one important thing is most of the people are not eloquent enough to speak in english language and sometimes if we get a chance also to learn spoken english we fumble in front of our uh, companions in front of our classmates we feel that if we commit mistakes while speaking agar mai gear phas if we stuck somewhere when we start speaking we cannot raise ourselves up to the level of eloquency 
So that happens most of the times. Does it happen with you also? Most of the times it happens. We are not able to present what we are. We are not able to convert potential into performance at the right time. So for that, eloquency is very important in the market. It is demanded in the market. So we need to be eloquent enough to present ourselves before the gatherings. So for that, the best tool which AI has made is why it is called Udly, Y-O-O-D-L-I. It would listen to your conversation, it would analyze it, and after that, it would prompt you. It would suggest you where you are making mistakes. It would suggest you also. Let's have a demo of it. Let's say I'll, I'll speak for 30 seconds and then see. Once we start speaking for 30 seconds, see, this is a prompt. And uh, it is listening to, uh, to my conversation. So 30 seconds, it would understand my data. It would analyze it. And it would give me a text description of what I'm speaking about. And after that, if I make any grammatical mistakes, if I, uh, you know, if I start using filler words also in between, if I am not able to process my thoughts properly, it would prompt me for that. It would listen to my conversation, my syllable stress, my rate of speech, my voice, my intonation, my pitch, all the parameters of communication would be analyzed by this tool and it would suggest me accordingly. See, I'll stop it and then let's see what it does. It would analyze my data now. 79% is talk time. It would give us everything. Isn't it getting displayed? Okay. Now see, on the screen you would find the data has been analyzed and you'll see it will give a suggestion. See, it's there. It might not be here, but uh, okay. Is it on the screen now? Okay, wonderful. See, the moment I spoke, it has translated all in English. And wherever the filler words are, see, it has identified, uh, 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 you know. So everything has been analyzed. And after that, if I click on coaching, it would give me a prompt where you need to rectify your mistakes, where you need to be more eloquent, where you're making mistakes so that you could be, you know, more eloquent enough to speak. So this can be done on your cell phones. At home, a person can do it. If he's really interested to, you know, become a public speaker or if he needs to raise his level of eloquency, he can do it at home also on a cell phone also. So see, the speaker discusses a prompt that analyzes their speech for 30 seconds. Or if in case you need to write something which has been handwritten by somebody and you need to convert it into uh, the digital, uh, you know, uh, you need to put it in a digitized format on a computer. So for that also, there are tools which would analyze that data. You just have to scan that, take a photograph of it, upload it into that AI tool. It would directly convert it into the text. So that can also be done. There are thousands of tools which we can learn, but uh, time is not permitting us. I would thank Mr. Chalku. Uh, you know, um, it's been a fruitful session till now. Yeah. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Uh, before we go further and uh, we take the last segment of this program, uh, I invite questions and answers uh, in the text mode only and we will uh, try to answer those questions. Uh, so all those uh, participants who are uh, tied to the screen, 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 please send your questions in the uh, chat part and uh, we'll try to answer them. Uh, in the meantime, so in the meantime uh, uh, we are joined by traditional deputy commissioner Baramla. So let's. let's uh, uh, we are trying to establish contact with Dr. Zuhur Ahmed Rana, traditional deputy commissioner. Baramla. I am in. Shalto Sab, I am in. I am in. I am in, sir. I am in. Hmm, is there? So we welcome on board uh, Dr. Zuhur Ahmad Rana, traditional deputy commissioner Baramala, uh, who has been uh, playing a pivotal role in establishing the various awareness and uh, uh, training programs under the banner of. Digital week. Sir, over to you. Thank you very much. I am uh, damned by the way you have been doing this session from morning. The objective of the session was to integrate all those departments who are providing e-services to the public. 
we want to integrate people uh, on uh, the core team, especially Baramala district team, so that every department officer knows what other department is doing. And I think uh, you have added AI as a as a special recipe to this menu, and it has also added color to it. And we are very thankful to Umar also that he has been he has given very good presentation. For me, I will be uh, restricting myself because I am a simple uh, uh, science graduate. I don't have much knowledge about AI and other things. For me, this this session, the success of this session will be when we will be using all the machineries for the benefit of the people. And number two, when we will not be subservient to the machineries. The human intellect has to be very superior. We have to hone our uh, skills and we have to use these machineries for benefit of the people, for common people who are our customers, who are our farmers, so that as a, as a joint venture, we try to change life standard, we try to increase the standard of living of people. We sit, despite having tremendous technologies at our back, we still come across basic questions a person from a rural village, rural area comes to us and uh, ma brings an application to the deputy commissioner for marking it to a tasildar for providing a revenue extract. Similar is the case of an agriculturist coming to an uh, agriculture officer and asking for some, do uh, some uh, instructions to field officer. Let us use AI, let us use this uh, IT resources for providing the services at doorstep without compromising the fecundity, without compromising the standards, without trying to ch trying to uh, replace our farm land by a lab. We can't replace our agriculture patch of land by a lab. These two have to gel together. They have to go together. Similarly, if we don't, we, do have a, we should have a cow who will give us milk. We can't replace a dairy unit by a lab. That is not the objective of AI. That is not the objective of IT at this moment. Therefore, I, I, am, I extend thanks to all the participants who have been attending this forum. And I think it should be replaced after circular intervals. Over to Tarek, sir. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Dr. Zuhur Saab, and uh, I am very sure uh, we uh, don't substitute the uh, artificial intelligence. People have apprehensions that this is going to be a loss of jobs, but I am sure that people who are equipped with these tools of AI, they will be a better workforce for the future. So it is all replacement of humans with humans. So there I uh, emphasize that all the people who are uh, looking out for employment and jobs, this is going to add some value to their capabilities and resources. Uh, we are joined by Chief Education Officer Baramal. So, uh, two to three minutes, he will uh, uh, spell out his initiatives in terms of making the digital platform for teaching, which has been recently started off in the premises of Chief Education Officer Office. Is he there? Is he there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, joined, I think. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Anyway, anyway, we will wait for uh, his joining. So I request uh, Dr. Zubair Musudi sir, that uh, the, last the last five minutes of the program, program uh, he'll be demonstrating two to three tools, and that will be the end of this whole session. Uh, we are welcoming questions and answer, uh, answers to be provided from anyone. Maybe if the answer is not provided right now, in the real time, but we will record the questions and we will try to reach out to those who ask questions. You are free to ask questions. Uh, Zubair, please. Okay, uh, so thank you very much. Uh,
Okay, okay so, so uh, thank, thank you, uh, you uh, uh, for uh, giving me one more opportunity to be. Let's say you want to ask Google. Let's say. Okay, so uh, thank you, Talkushar, and thank you, uh, Munir, for uh, showcasing some wonderful tools that uh, we probably can, each one of us can probably use that in our daily lives. And uh, it's amazingly beautiful the way, uh, you know, artificial intelligence and uh, base associated tools are developing over it. So I think there's a lot of takeaway for everyone who has, uh, you know, joined this today's session. Uh, one of the tools that I was uh, just recently using is what's called as DALI, right? So what Dali does is basically it's an open AI tool. So you you sometimes want to create some graphics, right? An image you want to create. So what this tool does is basically you input this and create this tool with a small text. Let's suppose you want to say create an image for uh, uh, for a cat sitting uh, in a corner of the house, right? So something you need to do for your kid. Or, so this tool Dali is able to create an image, and the best part is that image does not exist anywhere. You know that it generates the image out of nothing, right? It's not that it's copying some image from somewhere and just showing it to you. It's able to create the image, uh, maybe in some time from now. You can see that the kind of images that you uh, uh, are able to see. I'm not sure if I'm sharing my screen. Uh, just give me a second, so your screen is not, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I was trying to, yes, yeah. So this is something called as Dali. I was talking about Dali is a very uh, wonderful tool uh, based on OpenAI, and it's a, a, able to create some generate some images for you based on any kind of an input text. That, so I said, if you can see, sir, uh, uh, you know these kind of image, you know, an arm chair in the shape of a wagon, right? So imagine this is not an image that you can find anywhere on the internet. You just have fed that AI tool with some text that it can create. You know, uh, you look at this. Look at this beautiful one. A photo of a teddy bear on a skateboard in Times Square, right? So so this is the kind of an intervention that's happening and uh, you guys can make use of these beautiful tools in our daily lives. And maybe towards uh, the end of my session, I'll ask my student to ask it to maybe just show us a small demo of two minutes or how we can use it. But, but before that, I'd like to wrap it up and uh, postpone this demo for a second. So, uh, sir, we were talking about uh, use of AI at the district level. So what you're seeing here now on the screen is that we have used a segmentation system. So we are applying segmentation and deep learning. And this system, I'm going to, going to play it with in a moment from now. What it's going to do is it's scanning a road surface of, let's say, 10 kilometer stretch, and it's going to create some estimates for you. It can identify what the level of portfolio we have, and your you know, department of R&B can you know, just scan this road and you know, create an estimate, what's the kind of material, uh, estimate material, right? Or, so if you can just uh, uh, see, see, sir, uh, it's, a, it's a live demo happening. Uh, you can see that uh, this is placing using computer vision and AI, and it's able to identify, you know, this very deeply uh, how you know the road is placed, and uh, then it can you know probably make use of this uh, wonderful tool. So this is the kind of intervention that now we are expecting and it's happening and it's happening in the real world. So uh, if you can, uh, uh, I can show you uh, sir, one other tool that I had stumbled on uh, very recently. Uh, this portal detection is using the deep learning. Uh, if I can show you, sir, uh, one more thing. Sir, here you see, uh, this, is, this is a flock of cattle, right? So often it's a, it's a challenge to keep a track of how many cattle has come out of, you know, your this, no? So this again is using a computer vision. So we have placed a camera there, and once the cattle is coming out, we're basically able to make a counter. You see, it's a, it's a small counter place here. It's so 443, right? So when I'm going to play this video, you can see this cattle is coming out of a uh, farm, and it, it basically uses computer vision to identify and you know create an image uh, processing mechanism and uh, counting for us as to how many cattle have come out and how many cattle. So let's just have a look at this video. So you can see that this counting is happening right at the top corner. So uh, so imagine, I mean, uh, that's the beauty. I mean, AI is bringing to us and uh, the kind of tooling that's happening around AI. So great. Uh, now the thing is, I mean, uh, all the tools that we have seen is like mind blowing, right? Chat GPT kind of things are happening and kind of a tooling that Muni demonstrated to us, right? 
So all of it is a mind blowing thing. But the thing is that are we really pre prepared? Uh, at least I can talk about UG. Uh, what's the kind of uh, preparedness? I mean, are we in our education institutes kind of uh, prepared and or and are we making the right intervention at the right time of time, right? But I but they have seen in uh, let's say in Western world or US, they train kids at a very early age. So they give them the insight into computer programming. So that's that's how they develop. And I think it's the right time that we should start, you know, kind of. Uh, uh, rolling out programming, teaching programming to uh, kids at early age. Some of the parents may be joining us in the session also. So you should start considering teaching computer sciences to a student, to a kids at a say a very early age, and inculcate them uh, in them that critical thinking, right? So that they are able to see. And uh, if you really, uh, I mean, this is something that US does, right? US may just be of the bachelor, I think, Charles Alta. So they have this, this is an MIT based project, but for the scratch. So maybe, uh, as I said, our kid may just maybe take at one minute to show us a scratch. So the beauty of the scratch is, you know, you are teaching this a, a kid of class third. After that, they make a story. Banate. Usko choti si ek minute ki story banate. Or then, the ko bolte hai, What he does is he is able to convert that story into a computer program. You know, and MIT does it. MIT type project is a very, uh, you know, it's a free open source project. So I really recommend that jitne bhi hamare participants hain. They should at least, uh, uh, you know, uh, at least with Scratch once and see how Scratch can be used and, you know, uh, basically helping us to uh, develop and calculate the critical thinking in our kids. So there's a similar, uh, uh, you know, anyway, why Scratch is there? There are a lot of things in the playful learning and creativity is a boosting and uh, access is there and community learning is there. There's a big community around it. So if you develop something, you build a global audience, right? We had a we had a case last year only. We had one one of my colleagues, uh, Srinagar. His son is in DPS, so he was able to write a small program using robotics. And imagine, sir, he had uh, offers of, from MIT, from Pennsylvania, from UPenn, from uh, Harvard, from Oxford. A student of class nine was able to fetch you know scholarship offers. And guess what? He's right now with MIT. You know that. But what took him there was that twenty lines of code. That we wrote uh, uh, for a for a for a robotic program. So uh, having said that, uh, 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 this is another app that's called an MIT App Inventor. So you can teach students to create mobile apps. You know, you, it provides a platform, it provides a field, so you can you know uh, test it out. I mean, check it out. Uh, once you guys go home, you can just uh, search Google and check MIT Inventor, mm -hmm. check uh, I know Scratch projects, and see for yourself. I know what what's the kind of what's the kind of work that you can do. And uh, teach your kids at home so that you can inculcate in them. So uh, I will very quickly hand it over to Arkit for two minutes. Maybe Arkit if it's there, uh, Arkit can just very quickly show us the use of Tally, and uh, maybe scratch also Arkit for two seconds, two minutes. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's, yeah, audio, yeah. Okay. So how much time do I have? Uh, we have uh, uh, three minutes, sir. Three minutes. Three minutes, Arkit. Yeah. Okay. So beautiful. So uh, as Zubair sir was saying, and also Munir sir was saying, there are a lot of tools, you know, uh, currently being developed. And particular ones are obviously uh, the uh, models that do text, that process text, and the models that process images, that generate images, process images. And prominent ones are obviously ChatGPT and Dolly. So they are both from the same company, OpenAI. And the ChatGPT, as I showed, you can process text and it can basically do anything. So you don't need to like uh, go to thousand tools. You can basically do everything uh, with ChatGPT. Of course, other tools might be a little specific on certain problems, but most prominent ones are uh, ChatGPT and Dolly. So as I said, this Dolly, as Zubair said, is a very creative AI. So people can basically write some image prompt and you can still hear me, right? They can write some image prompt and then it will generate some kind of uh, image uh, based on that. Some text prompt and can generate some image, for example. And you can think about anything and why this could be useful is also, for example, you need some kind of illustration for your presentation, some very specific illustration that might not be on the internet or something that is very new that might not be on the internet or you need some kind of graphic or some kind of 3D model for something that is not there yet. And you can use Dolly's creative imaginative power to kind of do these things, for example, I could say a blue car uh, with a big, I don't know, mushroom on top with rockets, for example, this, I just anything, I'm just doing it and I already have seven credits left. But what Dolly will do is it will go ahead and it will run through this prompt. And this is at the cutting edge of what is possible. So you might see like other tools there, but uh, it's truly like at the, so for example, you can see this is, it, it generates this sort of prompt, which is not even there. So it uses stable diffusion to kind of, you know, do, for example, we can also type in a prompt like realistic, for example, 
and just make it more better so just play around with it obviously uh, the more better you prompt it the more better response that it, exactly. you know it will exactly. give you exactly i mean and the best part about it about you just like it's not something that's pulling it from the internet right yes it's not so, it's using so yes so as you rightly said it's using the principle of stable diffusion yes right? it, it obviously learns it knows what a car is it knows what a mushroom is it knows what a rocket is but then finally it uses it, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so this is about dolly i'll not go too much into the details because i only have five credits left yeah it's yeah. a paid tool okay, uh, can, can we move on to scratch uh, sure, yeah. sure of course okay we can move to scratch so i'm gonna uh, stop sharing for one second and share again i'll share the scratch window so scratch as zubair said discussed is a tool for for all age groups i would not say it's very children specific tool or only children can use it anybody can use it anybody who is new to programming i was never programmed before or maybe he's familiar with some other programming like he wants to get into gui event listening and sort of lo lots of different uh, things that we do at uh, at various levels in programming they can for example uh, visit this so if you go to their website scratch.mit.edu and, 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 and after may i just add that like when we talk about scratch you're not talking of an ai system we're basically no, no. talking of encapsulating the spirit of programming uh, instruments right correct they correct can they can uh, you know correct uh, but the point uh, is it's a programming uh, language so you can basically do anything with it scratch like any other programming language is primarily a programming it's not text based it's graphical user based yeah, so that's graphical right. that's, so that's the thing so what i'll do is i'll have i'll just basically like go to the website here as you can see displayed and by the way this is from uh, mit so massachusetts institute of technology so as munir sir i think discussed it's the most credible uh, institute particularly for computer science and engineering so it's from them they have developed this tool their alumni have developed this tool so what i can do is i can for example create a new project here and what you get especially for kids you get this kind of interface in scratch you have your you know have this uh, object here that you can play around with for example you know you have lots of things you can choose from i have a huge library of you know things i can pick for example maybe i can think about some octopuses there for example and i could bring that here and i can do simple things for example on the left side you can see i'm not sure if you will pick it up you can zoom in a little yeah, bit yeah, if you I want actually have more than one spider right so i can i can do whatever i want for example i choose the object i can choose a background for example and what's the purpose you might ask ye kis liye hai ye sab just it's just developing that uh, intuition for programming because hum jab matlab mai also i have been a student of computer science when we get into college there's a lot of, it takes a lot of time to build that intuition with loops a lot of things take time which shouldn't take time otherwise it's because maybe we start late but the primary goal is to start early and to you know build that kind of intuition i choose a background for uh, here so okay can we just move a little bit fast on this yeah sure maybe... we can for example choose a background i could for example bring some kind of uh, you know events here i can say for example when the right arrow is pressed do something basically yahi programming hai we can we can based on something we can do something write some kind of logic for example here i just put a simple thing that when i press the right arrow on my keyboard the, the thing should move 10 steps like this you can see when i'm pressing the key it's That's moving great. 10 steps so you basically seeing a sprite moving yeah. and what we have done is we have just pass two blocks of code moving the sprite 10 steps exactly uh, simple as that for example i could put another prompt like this and i'm hoping it's big enough for you to see for example i can press the left arrow and make it move i don't know like minus 10 steps and you can see that this is more welcoming आपको लिखना नहीं पड़ेगा इट्स नॉट लाइक यू विल बी रिपेल्ड बाय दिस द इंटरफेस इज सो सिंपल दैट यू विल स्टार्ट डेवलपिंग इंटरेस्ट इन टू यू नो कोडिंग इट मैटर फॉर एग्जांपल राइट नाउ व्हाट आई हैव डन इज वी आर डूइंग आरकेडी वी आर बिटवीन द स्प्राइट वी आर मूविंग द स्प्राइट टाइम टेंडर टू द टू द राइट and then moving it back then that's uh, that's back right so you can see that i'm i'm able to do this by using my you know uh, keys on my keyboard now for example i'm pressing left and right i could for example bring in a fish or something i don't know like whatever you, whatever you imagine you can you know for example bring another sprite like a fish and maybe i can make it a little smaller and for example i could say when i when i run the program so when i press this green flag here maybe just keep going here and there on the screen so it looks like the fish is swimming in the water just you know use your imagination i'll not go too much into the details and what you, what is possible but yeah i mean lots of things for example i just wrote these three three lines of code when i press this green flag forever just keep gliding to random positions for example if i press it now the fish just moves here and there for example you know just just imagine things and you can you know create things i can also go a little further just um challenge myself a little bit here and i can go to events for example uh, go to this thing and i can bring an if then block which people from computer science will instantly recognize what this is i want to do something you know based on some kind of condition so for example i can say hey if you're touching the octopus i'm, I'm telling this to the fish if you're touching the octopus just hide for example i mean as simple as that i'll not take much time so for example now when this uh, fish touches the octopus so it will basically hide like that so it looks like the you know the fish has been eaten by the octopus so again lots of things are possible with scratch and it's so welcoming that kids especially kids not uh, only kids but especially kids love this kind of you know uh, love this uh, kind of interface and they love you know building building uh, things with this so i think that should be it or should i
Yeah, I think, uh, Akit, uh, really uh, great to see some real ha things happening, uh, some great demos uh, presented to you. Thank you very much, Akit, once again. Uh, I take immense pride in uh, having you as my one of Thank the you students. Very much. Thank you. And uh, I really hope that you're able to make some smart intervention in AI. And uh, with that, uh, I think uh, we can call it a day and uh, hand it over to Professor Chalku for the. Uh, I find uh, this. I find this session uh, very absorbing, and uh, wish that uh, we could have uh, more and more time. But somehow, given that it's a working day and uh, our time slot of two hours uh, is already come to an end, uh, the doors of Government Degree College Baramala and our Computer Science Department are always open for all the district officers all the citizens of Baramala that uh, please come up with the problems so that we can provide you a solution and more so uh, AI has come to stay and please uh, feel and urge to learn new things because these technologies they be probably living beyond us also so it has come to stay and uh, my last words would be that upgrade yourselves and try to keep the learning windows open and uh, let's make the efficacy to work on the ground for uh, good of uh, the person in uh, who is lowest in the ladder of citizenry. Uh, we are here joined by Mr. Tausi Pran also, who is a uh, tech savvy person and has been helping out the administration. So uh, welcome to him and a uh, great day ahead to all of you. Uh, I put it over to Professor Nandini Ramadhan uh, to call it uh, the concluding remarks sir uh, it's my uh, bright privilege today that we have gathered here for this uh, uh, to mark the beginning of uh, uh, digital uh, week celebrations for the district it has been a very effective uh, and uh, learning day for all of us and the district administration itself, I would uh, like to place on record our sincere gratitude and uh, thanks to our district administration for choosing us to start this uh, event for the district. Uh, we, uh, we, I, we, we are very thankful to our deputy commissioner, ma'am, for um, choosing us for this day. Uh, we are thankful to ADC Baramban, our uh, Dr. Zohar and Rana Saab for being there for us and providing all the support. Uh, we are very thankful to uh, Chief Agriculture Officer Baramala, uh, Mr. Yudhvendra Ji, who was there for us uh, till evening yesterday, working on the modalities of organizing this program. Uh, I would like to place on record sincere gratitude to uh, Chief Education Officer Baramala, Mr. Balbir Ji. He was with us for some time, but he is uh, right now in a meeting being organized in uh, Boys High School, school Baramila. Uh, I would like to thank our principal of the college for uh, providing us all the logistics and um, other support needed in this uh, in organizing this event. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Tarek Sabral for managing the show and organizing all the things for this uh, event. Uh, and uh, last but not the least, our resource person from uh, degree College Women's Baramala, Dr. Dr. Zubair Said Masudi Saab, uh, Mr. Munir Ahmadwani Saab uh, from Education Department, uh, Mr. Uh, Mahjoor Saab, Said Mahjoor Saab from Agriculture Department, uh, HOD Computer Sciences, uh, Mr. Shakil Ahmed Najar, who was there for us from yesterday for organizing and managing that, ensuring that all the things are in place. And at last, I would like to thank our technical team and support staff. Uh, oh, oh, yes, I forgot one of the uh, resource person who provided very uh, small technical uh, breakthroughs being uh, done in the field of uh, education, Mr. Akid, Akid Masudi. Uh, he was there with us for uh, quick, quick interventions. Uh, thank you, Akid, also. I would like to thank our support staff and our students who were with us and all the district officers. Maybe I have not left somebody. And uh, Tosif Saab also, he joined us late in the uh, in the session. I'm thankful to all for being part of us. Thank you very much. Uh, there was, we, the, the program was being uh, telecast on 
YouTube live stream also. So uh, we are thankful to people uh, who were there watching the program live. I would like to uh, put place on record a very thank, uh, thank uh, a big uh, thank for all the participants and uh, district administration and our uh, resource person for making this program a success. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all the students who are here, somebody make a list. You are here until the end. Uh, so we will be having a certificate of participation for you. Gil sir, please note all of them. And I will have a mobile number and an email ID. How many people are there?